Okay, so uh, chapter 7, verse, uh, or section 6, we have the homework here. What you're asked to do is to attach the proper form of the conjunction to each of these words. So you have to know that the most common basic way to do this is to add the conjunction. What letter is it? What's the consonant that forms the conjunction? It's a vav. And what will usually go under it? Vocal shiva. Okay, that's standard. So you should always do that unless something makes it go away. And that's what the excep exceptions are for. And we'll, uh, we'll apply that here. So let's just look at number one. We have the word tsava. Tsava. If I want to say and tsava, how would I do that? Put a vav and a vocal shiva. Is there any reason why I can't put a vocal shiva under the vav next to a tzadeh like this? Nope. It's all good. Everything is delightful. Life is good. My life is good. Okay. Next, we have rehov. Rehov. Want to do the same thing here? Add a vav, vocal shiva. Is that okay? No. What's the problem here? I have two vocal shavas. Hebrew won't allow that, right? Now, here's the question. Does the vav behave like the lamed bet kaf inseparable prepositions when we have this situation? No. Normally, you would just shoot out an I and leave a kirik there, right? But this is where the conjunction vav is different from the inseparable prepositions. What happens here? Before a vocal shiva, v becomes what? U. U. It becomes the vowel shurik. Everybody say that with me. U. And then it becomes u rehov. U rehov. Why am I vocalizing that shiva as a vocal shiva? It's after a long vowel. I look to the right. The vowel is a long shurik. Long vowels mean the shiva here is vocal. Okay? So not urhov, but urhov. Urhov. Is it okay for me to have a vowel starting a syllable here? Am I allowed to have a syllable where there's no lead consonant? Normally, the answer is no. no. Every syllable has a vowel and a lead consonant that goes right in front of the vowel. But this is our exception. This is the only place we're going to see a vowel that can actually be a whole syllable. Because if I were to divide the syllable here, where would I divide u rehov? That's vocal. Do I divide to the left of a vocal shiva or to the right of a vocal shiva? Always to the right. So it's u all by itself, and then rehov. Okay, so that is uh, that is unusual, and it is exceptional. Let me go ahead and get that ooh back there so you can see it. Okay, all right. Anybody have any questions about these other uh, ones? This is, uh, what do we have, 15 of these that, that you were asked to do? Any problems? Mm-hmm. Yes. No, you could see both. You could see both. So let's just review that for a second. So with etsum, I'll go ahead and, and write it here as well. Um, what is going to be the normal way to do this? Put a vav and shiva. Is there anything that requires me to change anything at this point? No, these are both okay. I don't have any shavas or compound shavas next to it, so we're all good. What's the other way to do this? The vav could be pointed how? That could be a kametz. Now, when will I be looking for that as a possibility? In other words, what situations 
could give rise to a kametz under the vav instead of a vocal shiva. That's right. When the stress is immediately on the first syllable after that va vav. Okay, and that's what I've got here. So, v or va etzim. They are both okay. All right. So, yeah, I don't have a preference on that. Any other questions? Uh, if you take a look at number four, we have zakain. If I want to say and a zakain, uh, how should I do that? Put a vav. What should go under it? Vocal shiva. Is there anything about this that makes me have to change it? No. Is there a stress on the first syllable? Nope. Stress is over here. So no va. Uh, and is there a vocal shiva here? Nope. So we're, we're good. What about muragalim? Muragalim. I would want to put a vav and a vocal shiva. Can I do that? No. There's really two reasons why I cannot put the v here. What are the two reasons? Okay, one is that I have a vocal shiva under the first consonant. Putting a vav with a vocal shiva cannot happen. What will it do instead? It will go to a what? A shurik. That's right. So it will be u maragalim. What's the other reason that this would go to shurik? That's right. The consonant that we're attaching it to is a bump consonant. What are my bump consonants? Bait, maim, pay. What do those all share in common? They are labials. How many labials? How many lips are used for that? Two. You got to use both of them. Try to pronounce a P without one of your lips. <laughs> yes. Use your use your finger. Pa. Pa. <laughs> so yeah, you gotta use both of those. Okay, so anytime we have a bump letter starting the word, v becomes ooh, becomes shurik. Okay? So there's really two reasons for that ooh to be there. So ooh moragalim. Ooh moragalim. Great. Now Gabor, Gabor wanna put a, a v here, am I done? Does the V have to change anything? No. Does the Gabor have to change anything? What needs to change on Gabor? No Dagesh in the Gimel. So that Dagesh, that's a Dagesh Lene, right? When will a Dagesh Lene be blown away? That's right. Vocal shiva or vowel. What about compound shivas? Yes, because they are vocal shivas, aren't they? They're a kind of vocal shiva. Good. So it's vgibor. Vgibor. And then what about anan? Vav with a vocal shiva. Is there anything that forces me to change it? Nope. I don't have a vocal shiva or a bump letter here, so it doesn't become u. Right? So we're good. What about hokma? Vocal shiva? Do I have to change that? Nope. No situations force that to change either. Okay. Let's take a look at hoshek, number 11. Can I, can I do the hoshek? No? I could, couldn't I? But I could also have va hoshik. Why? Because the accent is right there on the first syllable. That's right. So va hoshik, va hoshik. Good. Look at adama. Vocal shiva with the vav. That good? Oh, no. Why not? 
That's a compound Shiva. So what's going to happen here? Okay. Are you sure I don't go to a Shurik here? Yeah. No, no Shurik. Okay, good. So I shoot up both eyes, take the corresponding short vowel. Va Adama. Va Adama. Excellent. Now you might look at that if you were to see this in a Hebrew text, va'adama, and you might think, oh no, it looks like there's an article, hey, swallowed up in here. Because doesn't the article often have a pathak when, leave it behind when it, when it gets eaten up? How do you know that that can't be the article, hey? That's right. The vav doesn't eat any hay sandwiches, does it? No swallowing hay for vavs. That's why they're so skinny. Right? Look at how big the beth is. Look at how skinny the vav is. A little toothpick. That's why he doesn't, because he doesn't need any hay. Ah, okay. What's that? Okay. Yeah, you know what? You could see a methag here, because remember, anytime you have a compound shava, the vowel before it could take a methag too. So, yeah, you, you might see it, you might not. Um, it, it, for me, because whether the methag's there or not, that's still a pathak, and you know it, and you know how to pronounce it, right? Um, I'm only concerned about methags if you need them to disambiguate one vowel from another. All right, good. Anybody have any questions about these last ones? Okay. If not, let's go on to the uh, to the translation exercises here. And what I what I've got uh, over here to the left is just a reminder what the article does because we will see the article used uh, here in our homework. The article is normally ha plus a doubling dot dagesh forte, and if the dagesh forte is rejected, it could be ha ha or he. Okay. So uh, in our translation work. My big concern is that you just be able to recognize the article when you see it and that you can provide an appropriate translation uh, when, when you come across them. All right. Does anybody have any specific questions about uh, any of these? Yes, Luke. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right? Yes. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Here, let, let's read it together first, everybody. Repeat after me. Mi fo hayom. Ha nashim po. Yeah, po. Okay, good. So, what's a mi fo mean? Who is here? That's right. There's no copula. Mi tarzan you jane. Me is Tarzan. <laughs> Me is Poe. That's uh, who is here. Now, what is the actual noun? Like, uh, if I were to ask you, what's the lexical form? What I'm asking you is, what is the vocabulary word that we see here? Yeah, it's the word yom. What does yom mean? Day. What's attached to the word day here? Yom. That is the article, right? Now, how do you often translate an article? The. So what, what would it be saying if you wanted to translate the article as the? Who is here the day? Does that make any sense? No. So we want to cast about for another way to translate the article. And what's the use that we come up with if we understand this is meaning today? How does Ross describe that use? Starts with a D. Ends with a demonstrative. Demonstrative. We have demonstratives in English like this. And so it would be understood as this day. Who was here this day? Well, which day is this day? Today. Yes. Okay, so when we come to this day, we want to translate that as today. Okay, this night would be tonight. Yeah. All right, 
So who is here today? And then Hanashimpo is, are you sure that's not the men? I thought men was Hanashim. <laughs> okay, you're right. So Anashim with an olive is men, Nashim women, Ha Nashim is the women. Good. All right. Other questions? Let's just real quickly look at number two. I have Hamelik. Say this with me. Hamelik. Al Arim. Okay. Now, uh, how would you translate Hamelik here? The king. Now, are there any other situations where Hamelik might be translated in a different way? We've talked about the article functioning as a demonstrative. The article could also function as what? It starts with a V. It starts with a V. Ends with vocative. Vocative. And a vocative use of the article makes it a noun of direct address, in which case I would say, O King. As in, O King, live forever. I love you, O King. Okay, now would that make sense here? O king, al ha'arim. No, it wouldn't make sense because if I drop hamelech, all I have is a prepositional phrase. You see that? And that means I'm not really saying anything about anything. I'm just saying on or against the cities or over the cities. Well, O king, over the cities. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. So this probably is the subject rather than a vocative noun. And then I'm going to translate this as what the king is or where the king is, right? So the king is, got to add the copula, al ha'arim, over the cities or upon the cities or against the cities, depending on the context, right? All could have a lot of different uh, possibilities there. Um, all right. Uh, oh, by the way, what is the ha that we see attached to arim? That what's what is that? That's the article. Why is it he arim and not ha arim? Yeah, I've got a guttural here. Okay. I won't be looking for ha as an article unless I've got a guttural in the first root letter position. So uh, that ion is, in fact, a guttural. Okay. And then I'll see the a uh, if that guttural ion and uh, he and chet have a kemetz next to it. I'll see the sigil. All right. Good. Anybody have any other questions or comments? So in number four, the answer to a question like mi basade would be what? Well, say it in Hebrew. Ha. Accent. Ha na'ar basade. Okay, so let me ask you again and you respond. Mi basade. Hanaar basade. Who is in the field? The, the servant is in the field. Good. And then if I said, a foe hazakain. What does a foe mean? Where is hazakain? Where is the Zakain, the elder. Where is the elder? That's one of our new vocab words. And you would respond with this sentence. Hazakain babayat. What's that mean? The elder is in the house. Okay? So let me ask you. Efo hazakain. Answer? 
Say it. Hebrew. Hazaken babayat. Okay. So once more, once more. Efo hazaken. Hazaken babayat. And what does that mean? The elder is in the house. Good. Uh, just a few review questions about these forms. I've been using the article here. In the field. In the house. What licenses me to suggest that I should uh, infer an article is present? Look at Basade. What do we see that looks articular? The Dagesh Forte in the scene and? Yes, and the Pathak under the Beit. That's articular, isn't it? The Beit has swallowed the hay. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Okay? Look at Ba Bayat. Do you see the article hiding in there too? Yeah. Patak under the preposition bet. How do I know that's not a dagesh lene in this bet right here? Yes, there is a vowel before and the dagesh is still here. So that is a forte, isn't it? All right, so that's not just in a house, but in the house. Now for both of these, what would I have expected if it were simply in a field and in a house? What would the bet have under it? Just the vocal shiva, exactly. All right. And then one last thing. I have the hazakain in this sentence. What is this ha I see before me? That is the article. Shouldn't the vav eat the hay? No. Remember, vav does not eat hay. So here, in all these situations, I have swallowed article, not swallowed article, swallowed article. Okay? Vav does not eat hay. Okie dokie. And we were supposed to go up to eight. Anybody have any questions about seven or eight here? Okay. Let's read uh, ver number seven. Ready? Um, repeat after me. Efo haderech. I'm sorry. Efo haderech. Haderech al heharim. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now, what's efo mean? Where? Good. Just practice that a little bit. Hadarik? The road. And there's no copy leg. I gotta supply it. Where is the road? Why do I have a kametz under the dalit of Derek when I'm, normally I'm looking for Segol? It's, the article doesn't require it because, look, I have the article attached here, and it's ha Derek, right? Now, Eretz does that. Eretz becomes ha Eretz, but Derek doesn't necessarily become ha Derek. So what is forcing that vowel to go from a short sigol to a long kametz? Yeah, it's this accent here. What is that accent mark called? Ath. Nak. You remember Athnak? Okay. This is a strong, strong disjunctive accent in Hebrew. Saluk and Athnak can cause a short vowel to lengthen. What is that called? Pausal lengthening. It lengthens because when these strong uh, disjunctive accents are on a vowel, we tend to pause on the pronunciation of, it, pronunciation of it. We park a little bit more time there. So, haderik becomes hadarik. And then haderik al-heharim. So, where is the road? Haderik al-heharim is? The road is... What? Where? On? Is this cities? The mountains, yes. If I had an I in here, it would be on the cities or in the cities, upon the cities. 
but that's a hey. So it's uh, on the mountains, on the mountains. And then everybody repeat after me. Hagiborim bamachane. What does that mean? The warriors, Gibor, one warrior, Giborim, many. The warriors where? In the camp. And we want to supply R. The warriors are in the camp. And everybody say this with me. Vamachane b'Yisrael. So the warriors are in the camp and the camp is in Israel. That's right. Good. Now, um, we have Ba Machane. Is there an article here? In Ba Machane? Yes, the Bet has a Pathak from the article and a Dagesh Forte in the Mem from the article. Look at Ba Yisrael. Is there an article that the Bet has followed here? No. That's why it's got the typical vocal shiva. All right? Good. Here I have ha machane. The vav does not swallow the hay like the bet just swallowed the hay over here. All righty. <clears throat>